Jehova on lak, ola molemmat. Jehova on lak, jaamme rakkeis. Jehova gadol, ma kärjen tios. Jehova ei donai, Jehova ei lohi. Kurios tios meitä kreita, kurios tios pistos. Elda et Jehova, jäl emuna Jehova. Ibasilian kurios, otios, openta kreita. Basilios, basilian kai kurios, kurion. Jehova dabar halal, Elohim dabar halal. Jehova Elohim, gadol gadol gebura. El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos. Ton Christon isun ton kurion. Kurion ni mahagion penta kreita, gadol gadol. Jehova Ishmael kam, Jehova Shema. El nakum Jehova, el nakum Yapa. Netzak Israel la sheker, gava gava, triembos Jehova. Jesus Christos, penta kreta, gadol gadol kebura. Mara Roshnasa, Elohim Elohim. Illeila e shalut, Jehova malak. Jehova malak, olam olam ad. Jehova elahenu, Jehova ekad, gadol gadol, gebura. Zaan logan ogar tautios, dulas desmias en despotes en Isus Christos. Kurion, kurion, kurion. Hagion, hagion, hagion. Numa penta kreta, gadol gadol. Derek Emuna Bakar Mishfat Shava The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, for training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of this great and unique indwelling entering ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing that Lord God the Father hates lies and vanity. Being his children, he counts us to be wise if you are walking in the path of the truth. So dear brethren, the great spoil or the great wealth which we have to rejoice is to gather in day by day the word of the Lord. Remembering the later end of our life, being acquainted to look what exactly is the fate of our life after we die? And being mindful of such life, we should day by day carry our cross and humbly obey each and every demand of the word of the Lord our God. So dear brethren, in Isaiah chapter 47, in verse number 6, in verse number 8, it says particularly, emphasizing the point that the things pertaining to the later end. He said in verse 6, I was wroth with my people. I have polluted my inheritance and given them into the land, into thine hand. You did show them no mercy upon the ancient. Have you very heavily laid the yoke? In verse 7, and you said, I shall be a lady forever, so that 
you did not lay these things to thy heart, neither did you remember the later end of it. And Deuteronomy 32, in verse 29 we see, Oh, that these people, they would be wise, they would understand and consider their later end. So, dear brethren, we shall have some things to learn about this later end. And we'll continue after this prayer. So, sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pile of wonders of His Word, which has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past, to learn His glory and His wisdom, and to become His mind to this people. So we shall continue after this prayer. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming into the grace of the Lord to know the truth, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and to challenge us by this message. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name, we pray, Sovereign Lord. Amen. In Jeremiah chapter 5, he says, A wonderful and horrible thing in verse 30 committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. What will you do in the end thereof? The question what he rises over here should certainly prick the hearts of these people to understand that the word of Lord God which has been given, it always gives you to understand your later end, your life after death. Because the life what we are living on this earth is temporary, it is short. The life which we shall live is after our death is permanent and that's eternity. So preparing ourselves to eternity is the theme of this Bible. What God the Father has designed for every mankind to look rather than perishing in the sins of this world. And why we call the sins of this world? Anything of your approbation lust, your power lust, any lust. This has been originated from Satan. When God made man, he made even the image of him to humbly communicate the truth, to teach nothing but his will. And in that it shows complete obedience. So in Proverbs chapter 23, we have some lessons to learn which he said, Considering the later end, how we ought to behave. My son, if your heart be wise, my heart, if it is been, if your heart is wise, then my heart shall rejoice. You know, this is what he said. If your heart is wise, then the heart of Lord God will rejoice. He said, my reins also shall rejoice. When your lips speak right things, the word right things is called to be meshayar. The word meshayar meant to say having to get your umbilical cord of relationship with Lord God. That's what it is. If you are not able to get back with Lord God the Father with such umbilical cord of relationship, then God the Father is not happy on your behalf. So he said, my reins shall rejoice, my lips, when your lips are speaking right things. And who can speak right things if the son is wise? If the son is fool, he cannot. Calling many sons unto his glory, after the image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he demands everyone to walk according to the standards of his right things. Yashir. And if you are not able to be in the standards of those right things, then it meant to say, we are really loving lies. In Psalm 119, in verse 163, we have this great lesson to learn. Because God's the, God the Father intention for each and every believer is to hate lies and to love the truth. And that's when you will be become wise. You are wise in the sense when you are able to love the truth and let go lies of this earth. So here, dear brethren, in Psalm 119, in verse 163, he said, I hate and abhor lying. The word sane meant to say, no matter whatever it is, I simply hate to such sort of a hatred like envy of death that I hate absolutely this lies. No matter what may be the pressure, I just don't love to be following the standards of lies. Let it be anything. No need of having any lies. And then he said, and abhor vanity. The word abhor is called as ta'eb. Meant to say, I consider it to be abominable. What this lying 
and what is that lying shakir you know this shakir is nothing but false and untrue words which are meant to deceive and that's what we are able to look today in our pulpits where the church pastors are stealing away the right words of lord god from the pulpits because if it is if it were the true words of lord god it would be saying as jeremiah 23 29 is not my word like a fire is not my word like a hammer which breaketh the rock into pieces and he said in verse 30 therefore behold i am against this prophets said the lord god that steal away my words you know false and untrue words which are meant to deceive is as good as stealing away the right words of the lord if your son he said in proverbs 23:15 the heart of you if it is wise then my heart will rejoice when your lips are speaking the things pertaining to measure air umbilical cord of relationship having nothing but the origin of the word of lord god if your lips are speaking then those true then my heart will rejoice he said my reins will rejoice he said but the lips of the pastor teachers are not speaking today the true they're not at all able to communicate the truth why because they're not having the practice of learning the truth it takes day by day inculcation of bible doctrine and these people they're not able to grow up for day by day inculcation of bible doctrine then for sure they're going to steal away the words of lord god and that's what we were looking yesterday in psalm 68 19 daily he loadeth us with his benefits and the benefits what he loadeth is that we have to come back and take and gather daily the word of the lord because we have the galgal ministry as ekel 1013 emphasizes we have the galgal ministry we have to be the standards of the people where the word of lord god has to be taught in the standards of elda than meda of 70 men we look how these people they were not able to communicate the truth so he said to them if they were speaking or preaching out of the camp as well he said i wish everyone should be like that man where the entire camp should be associated to be the disciples of the word of the lord so dear brethren in each and everything we look the word of lord god has to fill as the waters covers the ocean in this earth because the earth shall be filled with the glory of lord god the father and the glory of lord god the father which shall fill this earth is nothing but the true no matter whatever things the world may love to learn or look or understand or try to do or have that uh, or have the concepts of life we can easily understand all these things are vanity because the only thing that abides and stand it is the truth therefore he said i hate lies these are the people the way they're going to steal away the truth i hate this prophets because they're loving the lies when they're loving the lies they don't erect the truth they don't establish the truth and since they don't establish the truth the logic is very simple you are establishing lies so dear brethren he said over here i am against these prophets that steal my words So the same thing over here in Proverbs chapter in Psalms chapter 119 in verse 163 he said I hate and abhor lying but the law but the law do a love so here we have some of the verses to look he said in 119 verse 29 of the same chapter remove from me the way of lying you know today people are not asking this in the presence of the law the very first prayer of you in your life before you begin your spiritual life it has to be lord I want to have with you right into fellowship all the days of my life teach me nothing but the truth because we have to mold ourselves to the truth today or tomorrow the sooner the better considering the later end because after we die what is our life we have to get back to that remembrance the sooner the better it is that we mold up ourselves to the truth rather than having this ambiguity rather than having this a uh, section of mind saying that we will try to play gimmicks we will we will cope up with hypocrisy we will try to do with untempered mortar no the sooner the better you face the truth because truth alone will set you free truth alone will correct you as speedily as nothing can on this earth like like the light like the light light year or this 
lightning or thundering which may appear and we may listen to the sound as fast as possible greater than that is the truth which can go which which goes to correct your soul and spirit and prepare you well for the eternity to be faced the greater you are far away from the truth the greater you are going to live a life that which is absolutely called to be in simple terms vanity so dear brethren the very first thing what we should ask to god the father is lord remove the ways of lies from me and give me your law grant me your law graciously you know what a great thing we have for this in this church to do when we have the truth we have many things when we have the truth we have life when we have the truth we have peace when we have the truth we have great riches not only to be on this earth even in the even in the heaven to come therefore the one who loved the word of lord god he says in verse 164 seven times in a day seven times in a day i do praise you seven times in a day i do worship you you know that's what he says over here in psalms 119 was 164 seven times in a day i do praise you the word praise over here is called to be halal what is that halal to bring forth and to talk about the great pale wonders of your truth i shine forth i boast about the great praise word the standards of your truth therefore whenever you look into me you'll have a great joy seven times so he said seven times in a day i do praise thee because of your righteous judgment how many times seven times and this is what he said many times as the term seven frequently denotes but rabbi solomon says that this is to be understood literally for they praised god twice in the morning before reading the decalog and once after twice in the evening before the same reading and twice after making in the whole seven so they have morning afternoon and evening after when they read for the first time morning two times again the third time they they go on so they literally have seven times this is what the jewish rabbi writes over here for solomon in the tsk treasure of scripture knowledge comment so what they do first he said they praised god twice in the morning before reading the decalog and once after that is what after they finish that they're going to they're going to talk about these things and twice in the evening before the same reading and twice after making the whole seven so morning twice and then once afterward again evening twice and again again afterwards twice so they have seven in a number to go on so seven times in a day o lord we do praise your name So he said in Psalms 119 in verse 62 at midnight I will I will rise up to give thanks unto thee because of the righteous judgments the word midnight is called over here dear brethren as the half division of the day so for us we begin night by night or for example half division of the day you can consider from midnight 12 to next day morning 12 so half division of the day will be in the day time if it is 12 so again the remaining half division of the day will begin in the night so that's what the word called over here midnight and then he said how many times he rises to give seven times so what is the word over here the word night why does he refer back to the word night it is called to be laliel and the word laliel meant to say lord every time i am associated to be only your word only for your discipleship program so i build up a wall of fortification in such a manner no matter what may be the pressure in my life i will be your disciple i will be your double disciple that's the word midnight meant to say because the word for us midnight half of the time in the call to be katsot c h a t s o t h katsot is nothing but middle so here the point middle what is been emphasizing meant to say that no matter whatever it is we will build a wall of fortification against any pressure that's called to be the middle So he said at midnight I will praise or give thanks again the word thanks is called to be yada to make up your hand to get every thought into captivity for Christ because of the righteous judgments 
The word righteous meant to say, no matter what may be the pressure, getting every thought into captivity for Christ will make us to understand according to the demands of Bible doctrine that which could be according to His will. So, dear brethren, he said, you are righteous judgments because of that I give at the midnight thanks. And people don't have that habit of giving thanks in the midnight to the Lord. So, at midnight, when we look, the word it says, in the midst of these people where there are no disciples, Lord, I will try to become a double disciple, not just a single, a double disciple. Therefore, what does he do? The people who love the word, the people who love the truth, they go to praise the Lord God seven times a day. That's what they do. That's what they practice. That's what they will become. Because the people today, they're not able to realize the importance of Bible doctrine. They're just happy to spend their time in the standards of loving vanity. But he said, those who love thy law, those who are becoming the disciples of your word, they go to give the thanks at the midnight, at the midnight. And what is that? They try to become, even not letting go the time of the day or the night, they love to become double disciples to their word, double discipleship program to their word. That's what Koset followed by the word Lali Il, midnight, mid Koset Lali Il, night. So Koset is nothing but against any pressure you may have in your life. You have double decided in your life in such a manner that are going to build a wall of fortification to be disciples, disciples, disciples. Because we have been born today by default to be the disciples of the word of Lord God. So if you're not loving the truth, you don't understand the importance of paying back seven times a day. Morning and evening. And how much of the time today we are wasting today to understand that coming weekly months to the church is also a tough task for many people. And a man is in search of joy or pleasure in any other things on this earth, but he doesn't know the true joy, the true pleasure begins only in the church when they come to be the disciples of the word of Lord God, when they grow up to become grammatiers of the word of Lord God, then the real life begins, then the real pleasure begins. But they don't understand this. They just kept apart these things. And you know how much of their life they're just spending in vanity. Whatsoever they're planning, it's just vanity. They think they can have a great joy. They think they can have a great flexibility in life by going and following and practicing the details of life or the practices of the world or the fashion of the world which passeth away. They're just running these things. But dear brethren, we have to give thanks to Lord God the Father by looking to become His disciples, double disciples. And today we are in an hour of a need wherewith you should be double guaranteed disciples, not just single guaranteed, double guaranteed disciples. You should be the people where the word of Lord God has been absolutely fulfilling in you. You should have that great discipleship program in you. The problem is today, people are not able to understand that. In Psalms 55, 17, we read, Evening and morning and at noon, I pray. The word pray over here is called, dear brethren, siak. Siak meant to say, meditate. That's what we read in Psalms 161. Enemies love to pursue me, but, O Lord, I meditate upon your word. Let them go on to do anything whatsoever in their life, but we don't fear for them because they have been standing in the fear of your word. The word princes are nothing but the fallen angels, the way how they try to accumulate themselves. So the principalities, the powers and the rulers and authorities, he said, let them try to fight against me. I don't mind. I'm not having any pleasure in them. Because I have a pleasure only in having fear in their word. The same thing we read in Psalms 119 and verse 23. For the word called siak, meditate, meditate, meditate. And what is that word pray? It has been wrongly translated. It meant to say, against any pressure, Lord, I will build up in your word. 
let it be anything on this earth because nothing nothing is worth reliable or to believe on this earth because we have only one thing to rely and to believe that is nothing but your word of god so against any pressure any pressure or the details of life on this earth i don't trust or believe anyone apart from your word that's what it meant to say i believe i pray and cry aloud that doesn't mean to say like a lunatic person crying out the word called to be hamma hamma meant to say the murmuring or to be called as in the simple standards a great joy in your blood since you are having confidence in lord god and you don't have confidence in anyone else therefore you have a great joy in your blood that's what you're practicing that's what you will do a great joy in your blood so he said i will cry out and then the word over here he said morning and evening and at noon and whereas we looked in first samuel chapter 17 emphasizing the point for us in verse number 16 and following we read the way how goliath cometh to give the challenge it is daytime or in the morning and in the evening that's what we read philistine drew near morning and we read the word morning over here called to be as shakem means the early day itself it is going to make up your thought process not to be a grammatius to grow up into grammatius in your blood so morning and then in the evening so evening is nothing but again they put in your mind a distorted thinking when a morning has not gone well so they come back in the evening to put a distorted thinking in your head so that your body is not able to face the truth so that's what we find over here in psalms chapter 55 and he said the word in verse number 17 emphasizing the point morning and evening and also at the noon so here the word first evening they begin evening is again the same word what we find over there called to be arab arab is nothing but your brethren when your distorted thinking occurs in your head and that is reflecting in your body so that time go back to the word of god and again coming back morning what it is from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun you should have in your body nothing but the renovated thoughts of bible doctrine but there we find the word in first samuel 17:16 shekem here we find the word called to be as boker shekem is nothing but completely your thought process is been out of grammatius process or discipleship program growing up into grammatius therefore the word shekem is been used over there but when it comes over here it is been called to be boker in Sa- in samuel uh, in psalms 5517 why it is boker rather than shekem because you have been given from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun to be well renewed in the thoughts of bible doctrine to be occupied in your body but there as when the morning was coming the philistine is coming up with the challenge that you all will never be scribes you all will never have the thought process of becoming the scribes but by default christ our lord our god said in genesis 128 to replenish he said go and fill the earth with disciples that's what he blessed us the word barak meant to say we read that your body to be renovated in such a way that you have to be a scribe for the word of lord god nothing else than that that's what you have been called that's what you have been kept over here alive and there is no other reason why you have been blessed by lord god to stay alive on this earth today if you are alive you have been blessed by lord god search out the things that are contrary to the will of lord god and go to become that which is in the morning to become like a boker and to know that when you are daily learning in the process of becoming a disciple to be in boker you will realize how satan has challenged the people that they will not be grammatiers like the word shek came in first samuel 1716 morning and evening then where is the gap but here david says lord i do love your word seven times a day i praise your word and then morning and then evening and then at he mentions the next word over here noon 
The word noon over here, dear brethren, it is called as Taseer. The word Taseer is nothing but the midday. What does he do at the midday? He emphasizes the midday, emphasizing no matter whatever may be the pressure upon your head. You know, the three qualities. Here, Boker, he begins the morning. Afternoon, he comes to say, Tosier, and again evening, he uses the same word over here called to be Ereb, which has been used in First Samuel 17.16. Ereb meant to say, dear brethren, the people who are having distorted thoughts. So he now continues the cycle first evening. The distorted thoughts, whatsoever they are, vanish it out with the word of Lord God. Again he cometh to be in the morning. From the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, have a renovated head in such a manner that are going to completely execute the will of God the Father. Again at noon, again the word Toser, no matter whatever may be the pressure in your life, get back to do the will of Lord God the Father. There may be any trouble, there may be any persecution, there may be anything. He said, just get back to the truth, stick upon to the truth, rely upon to the truth. Don't waste your valuable grace of the Lord. Just rely upon the truth. And these things are very, very essential for us. Because if you don't rely upon the truth against any pressure in this life, really you're going to vanish. So he said, I will pray that is called to be meditate, siak. The enemy persecutes you, he said in Psalms 119 in verse number 23. How they sit and talk on behalf of you, stating that, how we shall deceive this man. But he said, thy servant, the one who will be a repeated witness, abed, the one who, go, who does to do the same thing without having any obligation, but he continues to do that. The person who does that, being the servant, will meditate, again the word siak. He doesn't wait, he goes on to meditate. The same thing he said over here in Psalms 55 in verse number 17, I will pray, it is not pray, but the word has to be, I will meditate. Against any pressure in my life, I will build a wall of fortification in teaching nothing but the truth. I will pray. I will meditate, I will concentrate, I will have nothing but your word to be for me the only rich on this earth. You know, if I have any treasure to use the word, it has to be the word of God. If you don't have the word of Lord God to be a treasure, then there is nothing that can be happy for you on this earth. You are kept alive to gather treasure because men being in a fallen state or a poor state, he knows very well he goes on to increase some wealth. So he thinketh the wealth in the monetary value. Because business people may state to teach you lesson. 90% of the results will be no. 90% of the results will be failure. Yet try. What for to invest? What for to make money? What for to do good things? To do great things? So that you can earn some things. You can earn money on that behalf. And you can do this. You can do that. That's what they say. Try. Go on. Don't wait, go on. You try, you become successful, you become achieving ones. The same thing over here, we look. Saying that, man has been kept alive over here on this earth to make some money, in the sense what? Not the money of earth, the money of heaven. Where there are no robbers, where there is no moth to destroy it. The money of the heaven. So what happens in the terms of the money of the heaven? You need to recollect back, you need to take it up, you need to do it, you need to become that which is right and good in the sight of Lord God every time. So when you're having that, what you do, you meditate. That's the point. When he says the word, I pray, people, they're falsely interpreting the word for prayer, for the silly, stupid things, going before God the Father to ask silly things, silly things, what to eat, uh, silly things, how to be protected, silly things, what to wear, like the pagans. But you're not asking grace of Lord God the Father 
to go on to perform the will of Lord God the Father. The prayer, what you pray, it has to all the time reflect the will of God the Father to be executed. And what is the will of Lord God the Father? None to be perished, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his word. This is the prayer which every believer should have. Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, or Ephesians 4, when he, the prayer which he prayed, Ephesians 3, sorry, not 4, and the prayer which he says in Colossians 1 as well, in verses 9 through 12, or Philippians 1 as well, wherewith he wants our spiritual eyes to be enlightened so that we could be completely filled with all wisdom, polypicular's wisdom of God. That's the prayer. That's what you need to meditate. Not how to eat, how to drink, how to become rich, how to become this, how to become that, how to become in the standards of being an influenced person on this earth. No, what you will do, dear brethren? People may think if you get a government job, you're secured. So the rest, the day of the rest of the days of your life are so happy that whether you go to work or not, you're going to get monthly package for you and you're going to be happy because you get all the privileges with that. So getting and achieving your success in a in a government job, you think that's life and that's great and that's good. Now, dear brethren, your life is not that you're going to get a job. And you go to God the Father to pray, give me this job. You know, you will be laughing tomorrow when you consider later when in the viewpoint of Bible. Because in this life, nothing is more important, Apostle Paul says in Acts 20, to consider dear unto us, except to finish the course, the drama, the word what we use over there called to be dramas. The course of life, in Acts chapter 20, you find this. The word course of life, which is said in verse number 24, drama, which is having the root word to go further, to look for this drama, it comes from traco. And what is that traco? It is what the one who runs in a race course. It is not just like an ordinary race. You're running your race course. The people when they walk is different from the people who they run in a race course. And you know how many motivational things they love to put and update in the status as well. When uh, that sprint runner who is going to record, make that record in nine seconds, so they put a quote saying that he practiced it for four years. But people will try for two months and they quit. They say it's not possible to get the record for nine seconds because that guy has practiced for four years and how we are running our life. That's what they love to quote and motivate. You know, the athletes, they love to put that inspiration quotes. So for four years of practice, then you're going to get for nine seconds. But you try for two months and then you say you cannot, so you quit. Where is four years and where is two months? So they say you have to be persistent. That's the point they want to take. That's the point they want to teach. But here for us, for just to finish your sprint race for 100 meters, you require four years of practice to reach nine seconds. Then you're running the race of eternity. How much of practice is needed? And you think coming weekly months to the church is enough? Monthly ones partaking in the elements of the Lord of God is enough of needed twice in a month or four times in a month. But the word of Lord God says every day you need to partake in the Lord's table. Why? Because the reason is very good. Every time you partake in the elements of Lord God, every time you come, you have been warned to realize you have to proclaim the good news of Bible doctrine. Katalagio, till he could come. You should teach them. You should make them to put into remembrance. That's what he said in my remembrance. Do this. But who may are remembering? <laughs> you have to remember your later end. Nothing on this life is more dear to you, dear brethren, except the course. The traco. And the word over here, traco, is nothing but the race course which are going to run. So you're spending your energy in performing that or attaining that. So here it emphasizes that which has been given for a proper accurate action to work out in a race course. For nine seconds of record, if he's practicing four years to achieve that, and the other athletes, if they would say, two months have practiced and I'm not able to get, then you have been left behind with 34 months, or sorry, 38 months. 
sorry, 46 months you are left behind because one year you have 12 months, isn't it? So 12 into 4, 48. So out of 48, two months, if you reduce, you're going to get another 46. So 46 months ahead has been practicing for you to reach that record. And stupidly, you people, not able to understand your real life begins on the day if you're not able to make it up morning, evening, and at noon to meditate. You know, the reason why you have to meditate, you will become wise. When you become wise, the Father in heaven is happy on your behalf. When you speak right things, when you witness the truth. Therefore he said unto Christ our Lord, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, because he speaketh nothing but the truth. He is the truth. He executed the will of Lord God the Father. He did nothing but the truth. And that's what it is today for us. We speak nothing but the truth. For what cause we have been kept alive? We have been kept alive to talk nothing but the truth. And do you think, is there anything else on this earth that could be greater than this? No, dear brother. Only the truth. So what you have to do, you have to begin up your race. You're practicing of your race. It is not just a point of four years. It's a lifetime of race. That's what he said in 1 Corinthians 9. Striving for the mastery in the Hismis games he illustrates. They strive for perishable crown, but we die for we strive for imperishable crown. So how is our race? Our race has to be run with great patience according to the rules, the rules of all the time being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not to grieve us, culture, wax or lie. Therefore he said, lie not. In Ephesians 4.25, being putting on the new man, lie not, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, sophrologia, morologia, phytonologia, stop it. Anything that which is against the word of Lord God, stop it. Your mouth shall not be opened for it. If you are still not able to speak the truth, he said you are able to give place to the devil. When you are giving place to the devil, he emphasizes the point, saying that you are grieving Lord God the Holy Ghost. Because we have been given such sort of a great life to understand every time that we have to preach nothing but the truth. Every time it is the truth. So he said, morning, evening, and at noon, I meditate, I pray. The word is not pray, I meditate, siak. No matter whatever may be the pressures of life, I build up the wall of fortification for your word. I meditate. And today, people are not meditating upon the word of the Lord. They just think the word of the Lord of a God could be read. You know how to illustrate that? Meditating and reading is a lot of difference. For example, the way how we feel by looking into a person when we are communicating to them, when we are having fellowship with them. When we look them face to face, that's what he said in Third John epistle. When I come, I write to you many things now, but I have many things to teach. When I come face to face, I'm going to teach. The experience of teaching face to face is different from then the experience of just writing a letter and giving. The same thing, for example, you may talk to a person in a phone call. You may be able to look upon that man, but looking face to face, spending time together, that has an impact of difference than you just to talk to them in a phone. Writing a letter to them is different from than, than just talking or looking to them face to face in the scripture or face to face when you're teaching them. That's what face-to-face -face teaching or being with them and spending with them is called meditation. Reading is just writing a letter. Reading is just writing and talking to them in a phone call. Today, people are just reading. They're not acquainted with the word of Lord God. They're not meditating the word of Lord God because one end the translation problem for the word pray meant to say what? 
pray without ceasing like a hacking cough you continue like a chain smoker the way how he doesn't use a lighter but he goes on to lit after one cigarette after another keeping the cigarettes in his fingers like a chain smoker like a hacking cough you may go on to pray you may say but it is not the point of praying it is the point of meditating and people don't understand the difference between meditating meditating is getting acquainted and the greater you are not acquainted with the word of lord god greater you will be still spending your time in prayer praying is what you go to ask god the father meditating is what you are listening to the word of lord god you are listening and getting back your answer through lord god so you attentively listen to that you mold your life you become the disciples of that word but today there are very few meditators morning evening and night seven times a day You know why? Because in simple terms, you love lies. Therefore, you don't meditate upon the word. Because man has lot of time to do his pleasure, to do his good will, isn't it? He spends lot of time in many things, whichever he seemeth good. For example, where you spend your time in the much of the day. Some people in the youth they may spend, they may say, spending their time in playing the cue ball. some people may say we spend our time in watching pornography some people may say we spend our time in looking upon the whatsapp or facebook or any social media you know you say that's what your good pleasure of time is but the word of lord god says the real pleasure the real pleasure for you is seven times a day to meditate upon his word Therefore David gives the details in Psalms 55 in verse 17 when evening i begin up my day to look for tomorrow's planning today when you're sleeping you have your plan for tomorrow if you're having a schedule to go up a catch a train by morning 4 o'clock you will wake up at morning 3 o'clock so what you do you have a plan now so he says evening evening i plan the distorted thinking the troubles will come in my head so what i do i just keep aside so what i plan for i plan for tomorrow morning what i have to do the word bokeh it is not shakem it's bokeh meant to say no matter whatever it is every day it has it has to be the same and the word same in the sense from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun no matter whatever it is we have to preach nothing but the truth we have to have the renovated standards nothing but the truth so what does he do he goes to put the same thing again and again so boker afterwards he comes to the afternoon any pressure let it be upon your head you have to meditate you have to see ak you have to get back and then seven times a day i meditate you know why because nothing on this earth is more important people may think i have a responsible job i cannot do this so you have your time for that responsible job you go ahead but pay the tithe of your time to us 40 minutes what get your time to the word of lord god do not rob that time and you see your day how it will end up if you rob you're going to end up in vanity if you don't rob you're going to end up in glory so you have to look that in simple terms he teaches what is that how we have to be where is our lie But what is happening today in our pulpits? People are not interested for siyak. People are not interested for meditating. They would say because, for example, people may say in India there will be many men. Not only in India, in many other countries as well. They say they have known a president. They have known this. They have known that to influence, to have some boast talking. But in reality, the president might not know you. That's very simple. You may say, "I know him. I know that. I know this. I know him." But he, he would say, "I do not know you. Who you are?" Because it's common for all elected by the people. So he may say, uh, he, "You may say, but I know him." But he says, "I don't know who you are." That's how the people they're running today. they may say that we know the bible they may say we may know the things but they do not know the real mechanics of that the lord god who really, who all the time uh, enjoys in the truth 
Because anywhere you will find such category of the people boasting themselves to say that I know this guy, I am influenced in this guy. I know this Prime Minister, I know that, I know this. But in reality, they are really not able to be known for anything in you. This is the relationship what are having today with Christ through the church. So he says morning and evening. And again he comes back to the noon. The cycle continues afternoon again in the evening. Three times a day. Morning, evening and at noon. The same thing Daniel also is an example for us because scripture, whenever we find the same thing we look, recorded to be a witness. For example, when we find over here the life of Daniel chapter 6, when the 120 men, they come against Daniel to find fault, they can find fault in nothing but except his God. So they pass down this and then they find an occasion to look concerning Daniel, a mistake. They cannot find him anywhere else except in their God. So they said, this man, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel in verse 5 of chapter 6, except we find him concerning the law of his God. You know how great a blessed man will be like Daniel. Therefore, in Ezekiel 28.3 we read, when the Nagaid question is being asked about that governor, he said, do you think you are wiser than Daniel? You cannot. Because the way what he does, three times a day he meditates upon the word of the law. So now we look in verse 6, Then these presidents and princes assembled themselves together to the king, and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, of the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statue, and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, except of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now O king established this decree, and signed the writing that it be not changed, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Therefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went to his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he knelt upon his knees three times a day. You know what a great truth it is, three times a day. Dear brethren, people don't understand about these things. Because again we find, he said in verse Psalms 86.3, Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Daily meant to say, here referring back an example, three times a day. The same thing, dear brethren, the people should wake up. Because if you're not able to spend your time in day-by-day -day fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot grow up. Therefore, we read three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Then this man assembled and found Daniel praying and makes supplication before his God. So here also, when you're able to make up your prayer three times a day, Satan wants to find an occasion now that he wants to find fault in you, not against men, but against God. Because you're going to be perfect in your relationships with the men. You'll pursue peace and righteousness with each and everyone. So now we are happy with the men, then what Satan wants? Satan wants to find out a vocation with God so that he can find your sin against God. So today you'll find ample of reasons, first of all, with your opposite sex or with the men to whom the moving creatures, what we call on this earth. First of all, you're going to find that occasion of a sin. You're going to find it out. Because your proper relationships with your pastor or with your family members, with your with your things which have been which you have been living on this earth, you will find first of all fault with them. Because man, if he's perfect with God, his relationships will be perfect with men. If he's not having the perfect relationship with God, he cannot have any perfect relationship with men. It'll be like that. A uh, standard called to be the fig leaves being tied up and whitewashed tombstones because outside they will be good but inside they are like the dead asps uh, or the poisons of the tongues which will be so terrible like a smell. Because you are not able to first be first right with God. If your relationship is not with right, right with God then any other relationship with human beings you will certainly end up in finding fault. 
But here Daniel, he doesn't have any occasion to find fault, except they said, now, if ever we want to find fault, what it is, it has to be against his own law concerning his God. So his law says, don't go down to any other gods apart from the Lord God. So what they did, what they did, they tried to come up with a great statue. And they say, for 30 days, 30 days, 30 days is what man's viewpoint is. But the Bible emphasizes 40 days per month. Though we have 12 hours a day, 12 hours a night. So we look in simple terms, 40 days in the Bible. But these people, they come up for 30 days. Because if you're not able to come and resist the word of Lord God for 40 days, you're going to fail. Because people know very well they're not able to come back for 30 days also. You don't want to learn the word for 30 days as well. But the program is 40 days. Every day, minimum 2 hours, 30 minutes or 40 minutes to the word of Lord God, you have to spend. Like that 40 days you overcome, then for sure you have won the battle. So here they say, for 30 days we will put. And for these 30 days, they shall not go down to his God. But Daniel knew very well, he cannot stay without going down to his God. As usual, his custom was, he comes, he kneels down, he opens the door of the windows. He prays to Lord God as usual three times a day. And that's what they find the fault. And as usual, we know very well, they post this decree. And since the decree cannot be altered as per the Medians and the Persians, we come back to look over here in this verse, which says in verse number 17, saying that, Then the king commanded and they bought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom you serve continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. You know, if the law of Medians and Persians in such a way that the law which has been designed by man, they don't alter, then how much more the law designed by Lord God can be altered? It cannot. If men cannot change their law, for example, in this case of Daniel, because it is a man-made law, then how much more the law of Bible doctrine should stand firm? The law of God should stand firm. So, dear brethren, then the king went into his palace and passed the night fasting, neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. And the word fasting over here meant to say, as te wat, meant to say he did not have proper food hungrily. And then furthermore, we read over here, dear brethren, then the king arose very early in the morning. He is very, very cautious. The word early meant to say, sep har far. The word sep har far meant to say, as early in the morning. So what happens over here? That which is to be like a pleasing day, comely day, beautiful day. What happens? His thought process and his mouth and his head has been waiting to look what is happening, what is happening, what has happened there. In the morning and went, the word word morning over here again it is called to be a different word meant to say no ga called to be the brightness of the day and the brightness of the day is nothing but to establish in you the vigor and valor as per the word of the lord and then he went in haste meant to say speedily because his heart has been now waiting what is happening there unto the den of lions and when he came into the den he cried with a lamentable voice unto daniel and the king spake and said to daniel o daniel servant of the living god is thy god whom thou serve continually able to deliver Deliver. The word deliver over here meant to say Shabazz, the word Shazab, Shazab, which is nothing but the way how he is able to pick you out from such situations by putting in you the wall of fortification in such a life that your thought process is continually depending upon the word of the Lord. Then said Daniel unto the king, and the king lived forever. My God hath sent his angel, and hath shut his lion's mouth, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found. What is that innocency? The word called to be Zaku. The word Zaku meant to say, dear brethren, I have been found in my life that I have been constantly, eagerly waiting to make up my life to be the disciple of the word of the Lord, growing up into grammatures of the word of the Lord. That's the innocence. You know, people don't understand today what is innocence. They may say, Lord, we are paying your tithes regularly. Lord, we are coming to a church and attending regularly. We are coming and celebrating to stand in the choir and sing regularly. 
and we are coming to do to pay weekly ones the attendance to the church regularly so if oh lord you will find my innocence in you lord god will smile and say because daily i'm loading the benefits for you so that morning evening and at noon you can come back and pray three times a day to me you love the word of lord god then seven times a day you come to prayer to me because you love to have great peace then the people who love to pray seven times a day or meditate upon the word of lord god continually so they're going to be in the standards of having great peace he said in psalms 119 in verse 165 but here you look these people they're not able to realize what is the innocence but he said, my innocency has been found. What is that innocency? The innocency that he's going to use his entire life to be a grammatias. If you're not able to reach to that point of becoming grammatias, dear brethren, you are still impure. So that innocency, what he findeth, he said, my innocency was found. The word found is meant to say, again, called to be as shakak, that is, in the standards of becoming a thought process like a scribe. So he said, my innocency is found in me, and also before thee, O king, I have done no wrong. The word meant to say, as over here, called to be kabula, meant to say crime. What is that kabula? That my wall of fortification in my body, as well as in our thought, whatever it is, it is absolutely a discipleship program. I'm not far away from that. So the word zaku. If God the Father would diligently dig and take, can he find in you, you are that you are innocent? You know, he loveth the people who are innocent to him. The people who are really very hungry enough and eager enough to become his grammateers, to become his disciples, to fulfill his will, to become the standards, what he said for us, to prepare to meet your Lord. Establish, prepare your heart to seek the Lord God. The people who prepared their hearts are the one who use the vigor and valor to grow up into grammatias. They are the innocent ones. That's the word zaku. Because three times a day I was been meditating upon the word of Lord God. So first of all, they wanted to find fault against me. They couldn't because they, they want to find fault. They would first try to look upon the princes or the provinces, but they couldn't because I have been in the standards of fulfilling thy word. And since I'm able to fulfill thy word, so we look in simple terms, there is no way they can find fault against you. So now they're able to find fault against whom? Against God. And today people cannot be wiser than Daniel. Three times a day. You know why you people cannot be wiser than Daniel? Because you love lies. And since you love lies, you're not able to realize the truth. And since you don't love the truth, you don't meditate upon the word of Lord God seven times a day. And since you don't meditate upon the word of Lord God seven times a day, you're still not able to realize as Revelation chapter 2 emphasizes the point saying that he cometh to make war against two with the sword of his mouth, the Rome fire sword. The Rome fire sword, which is different from Macarian sword. Macarian sword is one feet long, a short one, double-edged like the word of God. A Rome fire sword is a big sword, which is going to give them to chop you into pieces. Therefore, he said, be remembrance. Remember your later end. Love the word of Lord God, because the word of Lord God is our life. Nothing on this earth is more important for us than to gather in the word of Lord God every day. Because people don't understand the importance of the word of Lord God every day. They're so happy to spend their time in vanity. They're so happy to spend their time in stupid realities of this life. And yet they're thinking their life could be happy. By loving lies. No, dear brother, and you cannot. You are not at all in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, if you are opening up your mouth not knowing the word of Lord God. You have to be very, very careful. Because 
Lord God, the Holy Ghost is grieved on behalf of you when you don't speak the truth. In order to speak the truth, you have to meditate upon the truth. And if you're not meditating upon the truth, you're lost forever. And yet, as the queen over there in Isaiah 47, 6 and 7, not able to consider the letter when it perished, so you people are ending up your days not able to consider your later end. And yet how many days more you want to look this life without having the word of Lord God in you. Wake up to the reality. The greater you spend your time in lies, the greater you're going to spend your time in vanity. And vanity will not make you to look to clear cut of thinking in the word of Lord God. And yet, God the Father comes up with grace one more day. Be thankful to his glory, learn his word, grow up in his grace. Because he loveth to find the people who are found to be in his sight innocent. An innocent Zach who meant to say having to look in your life to dig and take if diligently seen the ultimate goal of your life should be ascribed unto the Lord. And this innocent ones are what God the Father all the time protects. These are the ones who carry the work of Lord God to the next generation. And at how many days more you want to end up your life in vanity you think? We shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God the Father with the privacy of your soul that to believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for so very simple, believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, where we teach shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry the truth on Laga. Herald the word in season and out of sin, because the diamantrum of witnesses where it have been called. The number one diamantrum of witnesses in willing trinity, follow the Bible in our hands. And number two diamantrum of witnesses are hearers. If they are no hearers, dear brother, not for it besides nature, the entire angelic coast will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us. To the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, what a great unique privilege it is, O Lord, to meditate upon Thy word day and night, so that we could understand. It is not the word prayer, O Lord, but siak, which goes to say against any pressure, we have to build a wall of fortification through the word. To the extent, Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, being the wall of fire all the time for us to protect when we come back, humbly to carry your cross and to meditate upon the word, so that even at the midnight, to understand the point, that we have been kept over here in this Shobeth Lely Ill, so that we could come back to become double disciples for the glory, so that in each and everything, O Lord, you could be glorified in our lives. So that, Father, to this extent, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this message to the praise of your glory in your grace. In Christ's matchless, pure, Gracious name we pray, Father. Amen.